Hello, it's Thursday. Welcome to episode two of Not My Idea. So for the last week or so, you've had the ability to vote on what you wanted me to design for this week's video. So here's the thing, right? You guys picked axolotl, but axolotls are everyone. Maybe you shouldn't be on the desk for this. You picked axolotl. You requested it in the comments, you voted for it, and the overwhelming majority said, yes, axolotl is what we want to see you design. Now, the issue with this is potentially because of what's happening with Minecraft at the moment, but right now, axolotls are everywhere. And I had to try and find a way to be a little bit different with mine. So after a couple of attempts, because it did, it did take me one or two goes, I have come up with my version of a crochet axolotl. So this is the original axolotl design, and I just, I really didn't like the shape of the mouth, and I didn't like the fronds either, even though you are very cute, and this is not... This is more of a commentary on me than it is on you, okay? You're beautiful just the way you are. But I did have a second attempt and we ended up with the design we'll be covering today with the smaller mouth and the kind of frillier fronds. Now remember, if you enjoyed today's pattern, there are plenty more like it over on my channel and you should go check them out. All right, let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about tools and materials. So for this week's project, you're going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in at least one shade, but I recommend two. So I'm going to use this one here for my main body color and I'm going to use this one here for the fronds and for the fin on the tail. You're going to need a pair of 21 millimeter safety eyes, your 3.5 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, pins and needles, some stuffing. So just because this particular pattern's a little bit front heavy, I'm going to be including a glass bead in each of the feet. So just as it's something I haven't shown before, I just thought I'd show you that this is what they look like when I buy them. I got these ones here from my local hardware store in the landscaping section, though I believe you could also potentially find them in like... I don't know, a pet store for aquariums. So they're just like glass decorative beads that I'm using there. This would be good for some crochet ASMR. All right, sorry, stop, I'm stopping, I'm stopping, I promise. But that's it. So one thing you may have noticed about this design is that it has a, a tucked in or inverted mouth. Now, this is just a nice little, little Easter egg, I think, for anybody who's ever seen the first video I made ever where I happened to design this little frog. And this is the exact frog that I made in that video one year ago, basically today. So given that axolotls and frogs are both amphibians, I thought it would be nice to carry over the design detail of the tucked in mouth. So that is where we'll be starting. So for the first piece that we're making, what we do is we're actually gonna start on the inside of the mouth, which will make sense when you see it, trust me. Uh, and then we are going to work our way down to the back of the head where just like the Triceratops last week We are going to lay a foundation for each of the frills I've discovered that I actually really like doing that because it makes the positioning of things so precise So we're gonna build those foundation ridges in and then we're just going to continue in our body color all the way down to the tip of the tail all right, so we're actually going to start with our alternate color. So the color that we're going to be using for the frills and we're gonna work the first two rows in this color instead. So the reason we do this, is just going to give a little bit of contrast to our mouth. So those two rows are a magic ring of six and then six increases to bring us up to 12 stitches. So just like that. And in my next stitch, I'm just gonna to swap to the main color that I'm going to be doing the rest of this piece in. So. I do this a lot, but color, so the best way to color change, in my opinion, is I'm just gonna insert my hook into the next stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you'll see there that I've got two loops on my hook. And then I'm just going to hold the old color out of the way and the new color alongside it. So that is what that looks like on the back. Notice that I'm pinching quite firmly at the base of that stitch. I'm then going to yarn over with the new color, pull through, and finish off that stitch in that color. And now I've got my blue on my hook ready to work the next few stitches. So that's the first stitch of round three that we're working on there. So now I'm just gonna work the rest of the head until we reach where those frill ridges are going to go. Okay, so that's the end of row 14. And that is roughly what your axolotl should look like at the moment. And at this point, you probably think I'm having you on and I'm trying to trick you somehow. But I promise this is how it starts. So for the next row, what we'll be doing is building in the sort of foundation stitches that will build the fronds off a bit later. So we're going to do those using back post stitching. So first up, the first bit of this row is just three single crochets. So I'm just gonna pop those in to move where our active stitch is. Just like that, so there we go. So the next thing on the list is nine back post stitches. So we work back post, working around the post of the stitch from the inside of the piece, around the post, back to the inside of the piece. And then 
working a single crochet the way we normally would. So that's our first one. I'm going to work eight more of those along those stitches. So just like that. So I now I've got the nine stitches that I'll be building my fronds into a bit later. Now to work out where my next stitch goes, I say this all the time, but I tend to like gain or lose a stitch when I'm swapping from back post back to both loops. So what I do is I'm counting backwards from the hook until I hit 42, which is the number of stitches in the round. And this stitch is the next stitch. And that way I know that I'm not gaining or losing a stitch. So now I'm just gonna complete round 15, which means I'm gonna do 12 more single crochet, then nine back post, and then nine single crochet to get up to 42. Just like that. So with those two ridges installed now, you now should have some idea of which way up your piece goes, cause those are on the side. The side with our active loop is actually the underside of his chin. And so that is the top of his head. So you've got a few orientations that you're aware of now. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna work the next rows just to narrow the back of the head slightly and then we'll come back and we'll do the eyes and the mouth. Okay, so that's the end of row 20 and now I'm just going to slip a little stitch saver in here now just to hold my loop. If you don't have one of these little clippy things, a bobby pin will work just fine. And now what we're going to do is we're going to basically form the face. So first up, I guess, is probably the mouth. So first of all, identify your frill ridges. Now I'm gonna put pins in just so that you can see more easily where mine are. And I'm gonna be very careful not to stab myself, but you should work without pins in your work if you can. Just it makes sense for me to make a blood sacrifice, but I make my blood sacrifice so that you do not have to. So that is the inner corner of each of those two eyebrow ridges there in the yellow pins. So those need to be at the very top of the head. So first of all, I'm just gonna rotate my piece around to make sure that that is so, like that. So because I use different colors for these first two rounds, it actually makes this process a little bit easier as well. So I'm gonna just poke that magic circle in a little bit like that. So I'm now going to reach inside and I'm gonna pinch that. Hello form a little mouth and then I'm going to with that pinched and held, holding tight I'm going to roll the rest of it back just to make sure I'm not making the mouth any bigger than I want it to be there's my little axolotl smile now just to help lock that in place and make sure that it doesn't move too much while we're stuffing it next because that's when the big risk comes in I am just going to chuck several pins through these layers in the most haphazard and dangerous of ways but I am determined to hold that little smile exactly where it is so next up, I'm gonna pop my eyes in. So, so here are my eyes. So what I'm gonna do is starting from this front ridge, I'm gonna count seven rows forward. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I know the stem of my eye is going to be inserted into that row. Now I also want to insert it. If I draw a straight line from the corner of the mouth to the tip of that eyebrow, I would want it to just brush the, the edge of that eye, if that makes any sense there. So we want seven rows forward, and with that edge lined up with a line from the mouth to the eyebrow. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna line it up to about this one here. Now, as per usual, I can only really guide you. You need to make the final decision. So with those two instructions, to me, these eyes look a little bit crooked. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna to choose to move my right eye back one row to make sure that they line up and that's a lot better. So that's where I'm gonna have my eyes positioned, which should be basically where they were positioned on the little pink friend as well. So I'm gonna just clip the backs onto those two eyes. Okay, there we go. The eyes are inserted. Check to make sure your mouth is folded. You will probably compulsively check that the same way I do for the rest of this pattern, is making sure it's staying where we want it. So now with those pins still inserted, I'm going to stuff my head. Now you're going to have to stuff very carefully for this pattern because we don't want to, because if you overstuff in the wrong way, you're going to end up forcing your mouth outwards. So what I'm going to do is just starting with little bits at a time, I'm gonna stuff. Now those first little bits, I'm gonna make sure that I load the top lip and leave the bottom lip completely empty and then stuff the rest of the head as usual. Removing your pins when done. So what we'll be doing once we've finished the body is coming along and indenting these eyes a little bit and also just stitching down this lip to lock it in place. But for now, you can remove any of your guide pins and we're going to finish making the body. 
making sure to stuff firmly as we go. And after we finish off, we're just going to weave our tail around through the remaining stitches and pull tight to close. So there is the body piece done. <laughs> he looks like a little tadpole. And next up, we are going to do his fronds. I'm going to work his fronds in two different colors. You can use all the same color if you would prefer. But in either case, I'm going to start with the same color that I've used for the body. So we should have nine stitches that we can work into along this ridge. And I'm just going to slip stitch into that bottom one. So the outer edge one. There we are. So I've just slip stitched into the bottom stitch of those nine. I'm now going to chain six. Just like that. I'm going to turn and we're going to work back down this chain. So starting in the second chain away from our hook, I'm going to put five single crochet down that chain. Just like that. So that leaves us with this little sort of frond base. I'm going to skip the next stitch on the foundation and we're going to slip stitch into the next one after that. So with that, we should have used three of the stitches on that foundation. So we would have slip stitched into the first one, skipped the second and slip stitched into the third. So I am now going to slip stitch into the fourth one along, which is just the next one, just like that. And we're going to repeat the chaining and the single crochets. We're going to skip the next foundation stitch and slip stitch into the one after that, which would mean six of them are now used. And in the final three, we are going to repeat this process again, just like that. So I am just going to finish off. And that is the base of our little fronds. So I'm going to weave those ends in just because the neater you work here, the easier it's going to be for you. So I'm going to weave these two ends in just by threading my hook through the body, through the head. And sucking them down and through. So there we go. So I'm going to grab my alternate color. So again, you can just use the same color if you would like. And now I'm going to add the little lacy bits to the underside of each frond. So how I do that. So in that first available chain stitch, I'm working on the underside of them now. I'm going to slip stitch to join my new color. I'm then going to very tightly chain six. So that's very tight. It would be very hard to work into those stitches. And I'm going to slip stitch back through the same chain we joined in, creating that little sort of loop. So then I'm going to slip stitch into the next chain. Once again, I'm going to chain six very tightly and slip stitch back into the same stitch we started that loop in. And I'm going to repeat that process again for the next stitch. So slip stitch, chain six, and then slip stitch all within the same stitch. So you should have three kind of little loopy bits now. Okay, slip stitch into the next stitch along. And this time we're gonna chain five. We want a slightly shorter loop. So one, two, three, four, five. Let's slip stitch back into the same stitch. Like that. So now we're just gonna slip stitch into that last available stitch and chain four. And slip stitch back through that same stitch that we started in and finish off. Finish off leaving a longish tail. You will understand why in just a moment. So now I want to hide my ends. I'm going to tuck this to first one just straight into the head. Just like that. It's hidden it away. It's our little secret. And now for this one here, what I'm going to do is just working back and forth between the available stitches. I'm going to weave it until it's against the head. And I prefer to finish with mine at the back just because they, they're a little bit more subtle. And then I'm going to tuck that one inside as well. And there is your first finished frond. Now I'm going to repeat that process for the other two fronds on this side of the head. So there are the frills on one side of his head. And now I'm just going to go and repeat that entire process on the other side of the head. Just like that. So you can see there he has both sides of his fronds done now. So what we're going to do next is we're going to lock his mouth in place and indent his eyes a little bit. So in order to do that, I'm just going to need my needle and I'm going to thread it with a bit of my main body color. Okay, so first things first, we're going to do the mouth. So in order to do the mouth, what I'm going to do is pinch this top lip just along like that. Then inserting my needle through the top lip just like that. And I'm just going to run a little line of stitches 
pinching that lip in place. Being careful to work my needle through the gaps in the stitches only because that will disguise what we're doing. And then we just leave the bottom lip to fall where it will because it will just sort of naturally fold into a little smile shape. Now from here, I'm going to indent my eyes a little bit. Rather than cut this thread off and then restart, I'm just going to thread it through the head. Just like that. So you'll note that my yarn is attached sort of on the top side of this eye. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little locking stitch in place up there. Just like that, just so that when I pull, I'm not adjusting the mouth at all. And it's just, it's just locked in place above that eye. I'm then going to thread my needle through to the same point so that we're after sort of that midline on the other side. Just like that. And then I'm just going to give it a little pull just to pull those eyes in a little bit. So I can pull them all the way in if I want, but I'm, I don't want them in that far. We're just trying to tuck things in a little bit. When I'm happy with it, I'm going to put another little locking stitch in on the other side. I'm now just going to sort of trim off and tuck in my little ends there. And there is our finished face. What we're going to do next is the back fin. So you can see on our darling little demo model here, the fin is stitched directly into the back and we do that using slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, double crochet, and triple crochet. It is not as intimidating as it potentially sounds to you. It's actually really, really simple. So to start with, what we're going to do is count 12 rows up from the tip of the tail in a straight line up the middle of the back. So that right there, that is where this, we're going to start attaching the tail fin. Now, to keep this tail as straight as possible, it doesn't matter if it wobbles a little bit one side to the other, but to try and keep it as straight as possible, what I'm going to do is just place the occasional pin down that center line. So I'm just going to put those three in and I'm going to use those as guides to help me stay straight while I do this next step in the process. So to start off with, we are going to slip stitch right where we placed that first pin 12 rows from the tip of the tail. Like so, I'm going to remove that pin, just pop it in the head for now. So next up, I want to work a single crochet just into the next available gaps between the stitches. And we're going to pop a single crochet in there, just like that. So that's that's sort of the first two stitches of your tail. Next up, we're going to do a half double crochet. So how that works is I'm going to yarn over my hook, insert my hook into the next lot of gaps, yarn over and pull up a loop. So there's three loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. So there's our half double crochet done. Next up, I'm going to double crochet, yarn over my hook, insert into the next gaps between the stitches, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through the first two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through the next two loops on your hook. So there is our next stitch and you'll see that we should be building almost a level bridge uh, even as the back slopes down. So the next six stitches are all triple crochet. So triple crochet is constructed in a similar manner to double crochet except we're going to start by yarning over our hook twice then I'm going to insert my hook through the stitch we're going to stitch into, yarn over and pull up a loop. So I've got four loops on my hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through the first two, yarn over and pull through the next two, yarn over and pull through the final two. And that is our triple crochet. And we're going to do five more of those as we work our way along the back. And that is what that looks like at this point. So then we're going to double crochet, half double crochet, and a single crochet, which should fall pretty close to the tip of your tail, if not directly into the tip itself. So there we've constructed the whole top fin. And now what we're going to do is curve around the end of the tail and work our way up the underside just a little bit. So in order to curve around, I'm going to put another single crochet back through the exact same gaps I was working in before. Like so now if you found that at this point you're not at the end of your tail, just keep single crocheting along until you reach it. So now I've turned my piece and I'm going to be working up the underside of the belly. So I might put a few more of those guide pins in, even though we're not working up very far. Okay, so working up the underside now, I'm going to put a half double crochet, then five double crochet.
then a half double crochet, single crochet, and a slip stitch to finish. And finish off. There we go. So that is how that tail fin turns out. And that is the end of our head and body piece. And it is fully constructed. So we are just going to pop our little tadpole to one side. And next up, we're going to start on the front legs. Now the thing is about axolotls is that they have the kind of these little like hand claws and I didn't want to go to like thin or like, forgive me for this, but creepy with them. And that is how we ended up with these sort of little stubby kind of finger toes in the shapes of hands. So one thing to watch out for in this next piece is that the left and right are exactly the same except for row four, which differs slightly. So I'm going to take you through the left arm in its entirety. I'm going to have the alternate row four for the right arm up just up on the screen so just be aware of that do not make two left arms for your little dude so these will be constructed entirely in your main body color and they start with us working three rows to get up to 18 single crochet around just like that so in the next round we're going to be working his little fingers so we do those using triple crochet just like we did on the tail just as a reminder we yarn over our hook twice insert it into our stitch yarn over and pull up a loop so that there's four kind of loops on our hook. Then I'm going to yarn over and pull through the first two loops on our hook, yarn over and pull through the next two loops on our hook, then yarn over and pull through the final two loops on our hook. And that leaves us with a sort of extra long stitch that should be three times the height of a regular single crochet. I'm then going to put a single crochet into the next stitch. And I'm going to make sure that that triple crochet bulges out on the front side, which for me is the side facing me. You can sort of pop it out the other side if you are working inside out but mine sort of naturally fell to fall in the right direction then so that is your first little finger and we're going to repeat that three more times to create four fingers and that's four so that's our four little fingers now as a reminder, I am doing the left front leg at the moment, not the right one. So that means that next I'm going to put two single crochet in, and then I'm going to put my final triple crochet in for the thumb. So the reason that the right-handed one is, is different is because we want the thumb to be on the other side. I think that makes sense. And we're gonna finish off that row with seven single crochet. Just like that. So there is his little hand, and it might seem a little bit weird and pancakey at the moment, but the next rows will sort of bring it in and turn it into a little bit more of a foot. So now we are going to finish that off with the next nine rows, building up the rest of the foot and the leg. And then finish off. As mentioned, that's our left one and you're going to need a right one as well. Okay, so for each of these ones here, what I'm going to actually do is stuff them just a little bit into the foot and a little bit into the ankle, leaving the top four rows empty because we'll be flattening them to attach them to the body. So I'm just gonna stuff both of these a little bit now, it's like no more than that in each leg. So this is the sides. Make sure that it's not puffing out that foot too much. We just want just enough stuffing for it to hold its shape and completely empty for those top four rows. And this much again, flip it all the way in there smush it all down. So there is our left leg and our right leg. I'm going to grab our body and we're going to pin them in place right now so they don't get lost and wander off. So what I'm going to do is with the thumb facing forward I'm going to pinch the opening so that it's long in the same direction the thumb is pointing. So just like that. And that is because I'm going to have the thumb at the front of the body like that. I'm going to tuck that right up behind that first and I'm going to tuck that right up behind those fronds slash gills with the thumb pointing forward. I'm going to pin that in place. And now I'm going to do the same thing with the other hand. So with the thumb pointing forwards, I'm going to squish the opening flat in that direction, tucking it up behind those fronds so that it's nice and level with the other one. I'm going to pin that in place. So I immediately noticed that I've made him uh, crooked. <laughs> I'm going to adjust his legs up and down until I'm happy that he's even. I don't know if these guys remind me more of Pokemon or Murlocs. See what I mean about him being front heavy? Just straight down. Okay, so now we are going to make the back legs. Oh, there we go. 
Right, so the back legs are constructed in an almost identical way. So there's a left one and a right one, each with a different row four. They're actually the same first rows from the, the hands. We just make the leg itself a little bit differently. Uh, so I'm going to show you how I make the left one on camera and then I'll ha just have the alternate row available on screen for the right leg. There's the finished left foot. You'll note that we've given it a skinnier limb than we did with the arms. And you also would have seen me insert a weight into the foot. Now, because we put that weight in, it means we don't stuff the rest of this at all. So now we have our left foot. You'll also need a right foot. And now we're just gonna pin those in place as well. So grabbing our little axolotl friend, making sure that you have the left foot. I'm going to pin it at an angle. You'll note that the sort of stitch markings along the body sort of are a bit of a slant. We're going to want to line the line of the leg up with those so that the heel is almost level with where we finished that back fin. Uh, you'll note that I've got the thumb pointing to the right, the back of the palm at the back, and the forefinger is pointing forward. And now I'm going to turn him around and do the same thing with the other leg. So those thumbs should be pretty close to touching. There we go. So I'm just going to check that his legs are even and he's not rocking around or anything but that looks pretty good okay so now all i'm all i need to do is sew those four legs on Okay, so that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're keen for another Not My Idea Challenge, make sure you hit that like button so that I know that this is the kind of thing you're enjoying. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep going off on my own tangent, which happens a lot. Tall. A written version of this pattern will be sent out to my patrons and be available in my store. I will leave a link to both in the description down below, but it does normally take me one or two days to actually get it out after the video is uploaded, just because of time constraints. <laughs> So I just want to say thanks a lot all for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye. No, no, no.